Hello, this is Arkma. Uh, the warning is going to be changed due to an oncoming scene, and it will be applicable for the rest of the routes going forward, so please be advised. Warning, Tsukihime is an adult visual novel with themes and depictions of sex, sexual violence, rape, gore, and abuse. Warnings will be placed before any of these pop up in the video, just be advised that these themes are in the story. Hello, and welcome back to Tsukihime. Last time, Shiki's life seemed to be back on track after the crazy events involving the serial murders. However, sudden anemia and a night where he almost lost control of himself saw him ending the night frantically trying to lock himself in his room. We have reached Halloween, October 31st, a Sunday, and we will now begin Chapter 11, Mirage, Part 1. Morning arrives, but Shiki did not sleep. He's just managed to lock the door, but his glasses have fallen somewhere in his room. Seeing the lines of death results in a severe headache, and it is mixing with his exhaustion. In his degrading health, he starts cutting at the lines in his room, desperate for them to go away and to stop the pain. The cuts provide an initial relief, but it is short-lived, with Shiki getting thirstier the more he does it. Thirstier for what, though? I know what I'm thirsty for. I'm thirsty for everything. Everything I see is pissing me off. They look miserable. I can't forgive that they are l living meaninglessly even though they have death built into them. Why don't they die? They all have this have an end they can't escape from, so why do they still exist like that? If it will end anyway, where's the meaning in existence? Everything I see is ghastly, but if I close my eyes, all I can remember is the sensation of killing. Shiki goes on to discuss the immense pleasure of using his knife, even reminiscing euphorically about killing Arkuid. By this time, I was getting a bit unnerved reading this out, and I say as much here. I know I'm just reading it here, but this is very scary. Shiki's descent into madness is interrupted by Hisui speaking to him from the hallway. When she asks for Shiki to unlock the door, he panics. He locked it because he knew what would happen if anyone was near him as he is now. Or rather, he doesn't know what would happen, so he can't let anyone in. He screams at her to leave, and after one more attempt in rejection, Hisui's footsteps signify her otherwise quiet leaving from the door. With a crisis averted, Shiki feels slightly calmer and decides to try reading a book. However, the book with English sentences that was near his pillow is gone. He frantically searches for the book, as even though he admits to not being able to read it, it was something to take away the unbearable marching of time alone in this room. After some time, he still can't find it. The book! The book! Come to think of it, why did I even have that book by my pillow? I don't know. I don't even remember bringing it here. I don't know where I bought it from. In the first place, did that book even exist? Oh, what the fuck? D did I do that? I I don't know if I did that. I, I hope I didn't. I'm going to load that back. I, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load back. Uh, I'm gonna go to load. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna load this again. We're gonna we're gonna jump to back to that. <laughs> they caught me off guard. I'm just worried. I accidentally clicked something and I proceeded too quickly. Okay, so we're looking for the book. I can't find it. I'm trying to remember what it looked like. The book. Come to think of it, why did I even put that book by my pillow? I don't know. I don't even remember bringing it here. I don't know where I brought it from. In the first place, that book even exists? Really, you may not have realized it. I remember Roa's irksome voice. That book, those contents. The book I read when I couldn't sleep. Was it maybe just a dream of mine dreaming that I was awake and couldn't sleep? But you were already insane a long, long time ago. Roa said such words. Dream. Dream. But I don't see those kind of dreams. In the first place, I don't have that strange knowledge inside of me. There's no reason for me to have that dream. That isn't my dream. You may not have realized it. Shut up. <sighs> then what is it, Hat? Since when the hell did I start having the dreams that belong to another person? You and I are connected, Shiki. Shut up. You're dead. You're already dead, you bastard. So stop your incessant calling out. I'm different from you. I'm not a killer. I'm just confused by all these after effects. Since Yell Senpai came back, I won't allow myself to go mad over something like that. Yeah, I also thought so at first. Even if this Roa came in. I told you to shut up! With his thirst growing, Shiki continues to lose control over himself. Isui, hearing Shiki yelling and pounding in his room,
comes back and worryingly asks from the hall what is happening. He can't answer. He's lost the ability to even form the words to respond. Instead, his mind is nothing but a desire for intense sensual pleasure. Pleasure that is mixing with the sexual and his prior glee at the idea of cutting through people. In an attempt to fight this feeling, Shiki screams and hammers his head repeatedly against the wall to try in vain to force it out of him. As he continues, Hisui is banging on the door, desperate for Shiki to open it. Shiki realizes that his impulse must be Roa, but wonders why it didn't happen until coming to the mansion. After this, though, he remembers his dream from Chapter 9, the last reincarnation of Roa who had tried to lock herself away before succumbing to the influence. He understands her feelings, and the terrifying reality that would come once his own will dies, as Roa will then take his place. His thoughts once again are cut off by Hisui calling out, but it sounds further away and unintelligible to Shiki. Time then passes to 10 a.m. Hisui had given up and left the door by then, but Akiha and Kohaku have made attempts to get Shiki to open up, but to no avail. It's now noon, he's hungry and shaking, but he won't leave. 2 p.m. He's still keeping his body from raging. 4 p.m. Someone's knocking, but he doesn't know who, and he doesn't know who they're calling for. 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Not until 8 p.m. does something change. 8 o'clock. Someone comes by. Sh Shiki-san, I brought you dinner. You, hadn't ha you haven't had anything since this morning, so you'll collapse, you know. Kohaku's voice. She knocks on the door. Geez, if that's how it is, I'll get you to at least eat. A rattling sound. Not knocking, but the sound of a lock opening. <laughs> Time to use my secret weapon. The master key. Ah. The lock unlocks. No, I'll have to turn Kohaku's on away. I'll just have her leave the food in here. This choice comes with an additional warning. I select choice one, and though it requires warnings for assault, attempted murder, choking, and rape, we do not get a visual for this. I checked the second choice later to see if it would have been better, and it was not. In fact, it was worse. It includes graphic depictions of the above warnings, along with descriptions. If you have been following along or playing on your own, I do not advise selecting option 2, and I will be warning where these options are in the future. Skip ahead to 956 to avoid option 1's content that involves the above mentioned warnings. Selecting the option to try and turn her away, Shiki sees with horror the door opening. There's nothing he can do to stop her entering, but he desperately tries to keep calm. Kohaku walks in and is surprised at the wreck that is his room, but she's still smiling. She questions what happened as she approaches his bed. His mind demands he hurries to do what it needs, and Shiki is losing to this feeling. Before being overpowered by this desire, he manages to release the words, run away, out from his lips to try and convey the danger to Kohaku. She doesn't quite hear it, and asks him to repeat it while she approaches the bed. He's failed, and the worst outcome is here. She puts a hand on his shoulder, and Shiki loses control. He grips Kohaku's neck and starts to choke her. She screams, but starts to lose air, all the while clawing desperately at his arms to try and break free. Shiki's mind is consumed with murderous pleasure, but as his disgusting thoughts develop outward into a horrible laughter, it leaves. The intense heat leaves his body, and he's back in control. Realizing this, and seeing Kohaku still suffering, he quickly lets go of her neck. She falls and gasps for air. She starts to cry, unable to move from the floor. As Shiki looks down at her, he sees that he didn't just lose that heat, but his body also had a release due to the warped pleasure, and the result was now covering her kimono. Though he's disgusted at himself, a thirst starts rising inside him. I'm so thirsty. I've done such a terrible thing to Kahaku-san, but it doesn't seem to end. The truth is, my regret is fading even now as I look at Kahaku-san's neck. Her white neck. Put my teeth at her throat and I want to suck her blood. Ah. Uh. I broke apart. Ugh. I really broke down. I'm done. No longer do I have the confidence to stay sane. <laughs> outside. I have to go outside. If I stay here, I'll kill Kahaku-san. If I stay in the mansion, I'll kill even Akiha and Asui. So before those urges come again, I have to disappear. <laughs> A place where no one is. 
I have to go to a place where no one is or I'll go crazy again. Wow, this has just been the worst. I leave the mansion. What the hell is going on? Even though there's no one around, I can feel the presence of people. Buildings. From the houses around me, I sense people. With all these people here, I won't be able to hold back again. Somewhere. I have to go somewhere without any people or I'll never be able to calm down. Where no one is. Where there's no residences nearby. Somewhere. Where even if I go crazy again, I won't cause anyone any trouble. There's no one else in the park. There's no houses nearby. No one's supposed to be here, but I still can't calm down. No matter how far away they are, there are houses all around here. I can see the lights of town in the distance. It doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. There's no place in a city where you can't sense any presence of humans. There's really no place where I can truly be alone in this civilized city. Damn it. All around me. So many people are around me. If I just wa walk just a little, I can catch all the prey I want. Shut up. My head hurts. Even though I finally don't see the lines anymore, I'll start to see them again like this. Eh? Wait, Shiki. Isn't this strange? Because it's not like I was seeing those lines because I was excited. Those lines are things I can't help but see when I don't have my glasses on. So even if I'm calmed down, I would still see them if I had my glasses on. If I don't have my glasses on. But I've dropped my glasses. They're here. I bring my fingers to my face and find out my glasses were there all along. Ah, oh, it's a, you know, it'd be like that sometimes, you know? <laughs> you look all around and it's actually like in your pocket or something. Even if I, in other words, even if I wear the glasses Sensei gave me, I cannot control my eyes anymore. <laughs> I'm hit with the truth. Just like Roa said, I just didn't realize that I was already insane. That night... Ever since that time when I wanted to, from the bottom of my heart to kill that bastard who was disgracing Ciel. Oh, then, the headache from that time was... The headache from when I was fighting Roa. When I saw those lines of death, even though I don't remember taking off my glasses. When I got Ciel Senpai to go find them for me. Since that time, I... Even when I wore my glasses, regardless of what my intentions were, I've been able to see those lines. Senpai knew... No, she probably just didn't tell me. So as not to worry me, she lied to protect my mistaken perceptions. I see. Sam Pai. She told me to talk to her if anything happened. I've already memorized her phone number. Phone. There's a payphone nearby. But what am I going to do by calling her? No one can heal my body. Even CL Senpai can't heal what's inside me. I can't let her see me like this, but I still I want to hear her voice. Oh, fuck. <laughs> With everything that's happened, I was nervous about both options. However, having someone to reach out to is better than nothing, so I decide to call her. Shiki wants to hear her voice, and believes her to be the only way for him not to lose himself. Calling via a nearby payphone, she picks up and asks who it is. Despite his desire to ask for help, he can't bring himself to speak. He visualizes her on the other side, a phone to her ear, and realizes he can't bring her into this. Before hanging up the phone, however, she speaks again. Tonokun? Is that you, Tonokun? Uh, hearing my name, I suddenly want to cry. Yes. I slip out a response. Ah, I knew it was you, Tonokun. Why are you calling this late? I tell myself to stop. I tell myself to make up some excuse, tell her I'll see her tomorrow, and hang up. But I can't seem to do that. Senpai, I, I think I'm not going to make it. I speak in a fading voice. Tonokun? It sounds like her voice froze. Tonokun, what do you mean? What's wrong? I mean, I can't make it. I tried to resist it, but it was useless. Like he said, it seems like I'm just a killer. And a really bad one, too. Even now, if I let my guard down, I want to slice my, my knife through Akiha's or Sui's throat. Not just someone off the street, but people close to me. My sanity is about to crumble away. I'm, I'm at the point of thinking such things. What should I do? I can't kill myself. I've never been taught how to kill myself. And where are you right now? In the park. I wanted to go where there weren't, aren't any people, but there's too many houses nearby. I'm going crazy. I understand. I'll head to the school, so let's meet there. There's no houses nearby, so won't it be quiet? That's right. At school, there won't be anyone there. All right? Please wait at the school grounds. The line cuts off. Eggs at the phone booth. Senpai. I can see CL Senpai. 
I don't think anything will change when I see her, but I still want to see her. Gah. My body starts to get hot again. Hoping I won't meet anyone on the way to school, I leave the park with uncertain steps. Reaching the school grounds, Shiki quickly cuts the lock with his knife. He realized that he brought it without thinking, the warping of his mind being responsible with its urge to kill. As he gets to the school grounds, he falls to his knees. His body's hot, but he's still in control. His mind raises back to Kohaku from earlier, and how this feeling briefly left him. However, he realizes how bad his actions were to her, and how there's no apology that could atone for it. He then remembers Ciel's words on sinners from after he killed Arquid, and wonders if there is atonement for the sins of his mind. Before he can think further, the night grows darker, and he can hear approaching footsteps. It suddenly gets darker. The sound of footsteps. I didn't realize it since I was face down, but someone is coming. Under the moonlight. Did that person darken the sky with her shadow? Are you trying to repent, Tonokun? Ciel Senpai asks in a cold voice. Senpai... She really came. I want to see her face, so I lift my head like I'm looking up at the night sky. Oh no. <laughs> uh, but this. Holy shit, that's raw as hell. That's badass. This isn't the CL I know. Her bare arms have the tattoo of a cross on them. Her cold eyes, as if watching someone she doesn't even know. Senpai bears an uncouth weapon with an aura of coldness that doesn't suit her. Ah, I know this. Inside my brain, I know what the weapon is. That has to be what's called the Seventh Holy Scripture, one of the Apocrypha that must never be removed from its resting place. Uh-oh. Senpai? As I expected, you were row after all, Tonokun. With her frigid eyes, Senpai speaks with a voice that is equally cold. I start to feel a shiver up my spine. For no reason. No, my instincts and my brain work full force to tell me the danger and I jump back. Still, with her mouth shut, she takes a step forward towards me with that ominous weapon. She so has no openings whatsoever. If I run away hastily, if I show my back to her, I know that thing will pierce my heart and I will disappear without the opportunity for reincarnation ever again. Even though I don't even have that knowledge in my memories. Why? I just... I just wanted to see Senpai again. I understand. Roa is already surfacing, right? And it is too late already. Lightly, she takes another effortless step forward. That figure looks like... What are you doing, senpai? You look like... You're going to kill me. She doesn't answer. She just stares at me like she's trying to find out where she can aim to kill me quickly. Senpai. She's serious. She seriously plans to kill me. Creak. My nerves feel the imminent death before me. My spine is screaming and the back of my neck is numbing. But more than this fear of death, I can't believe this person is saying such things. Why? I don't know. Senpai, you said you'd stayed here for my sake. With a start, Ciel Senpai's legs stop. She looks at me and grins. Your goodness really is a rare treasure. It is a good thing to trust people. But if you were a little more composed and thought about it clearly, you could have maybe got away. Uh, first of all, you didn't, didn't you ever think about why I came to this school in the first place? I didn't do it just because I wanted to, you know. Sent Pai, you knew my goal was to destroy the serpent, Roa. Coming here to this school was because I knew Roa's reincarnated host was here. Oh. But since I didn't know for sure, I needed to check things out for a while. Wait a minute, what in the world are you- Despite his confusion, Ciel begins to explain why she attended the school. When looking for Roa's reincarnation, following his requirements for a host can easily narrow down the targets. A rich or influential family, and physical potential. With some research, one could find families with special powers that fit that second requirement. With this, she only knew of one person that it could be. As Shiki realizes, she states that her original target, was him. Though she initially kept her distance and observed him, she came to realize he may not actually be Roa. She believed the eldest Tono had to be the reincarnation. We learned in chapter 9 that there were two Shikis, ours and the true-blooded Tono Shiki. The pronunciation of both names are the same, however the Japanese symbols written are different. 
When she looked further into this, she found some information about that day eight years ago. She says when Roa killed our Shiki, it was more like his, quote, life was stolen, unquote, which resulted in a connection between Roa and our Shiki. Those dreams that Shiki experienced in prior chapters were the result of this connection. It also gave Roa a backup plan in case anything happened to his current host. That's why, when Shiki's body was destroyed, Roa didn't need to reincarnate. He still had a plan to run to you. Cold. As if hating her enemy, she detests me. But it's all over now. I wasn't prepared to finish it so suddenly that one night, but tonight is different. I really am fortunate in a way. If Arkwood had destroyed Roa, he would probably would have reincarnated again. I can't believe this. That, that, that's not true. Go ahead, please keep on denying it and play dumb. That makes my job easier. Still, a metallic rattling sounds from her weapon. That doesn't change the fact that I can finish you off easily no matter what you do, Roa. Her laughing voice causes me to finally understand. She isn't lying. Her eyes aren't looking at me. Her feelings never did have anything to do with me from the very beginning. What is this? That from the very beginning you've only thought of me as Roa? Senpai. Being friends with me was all just... I can't say it. I can't finish that sentence. If I do, I feel everything will turn into a lie in that instant. Of course. After Shiki was destroyed, the only reason why I stayed in school was because Roa had not disappeared. Since Roa is a student here, it's more convenient for me to stay. I would never go back while I'm leaving you here. That's what she told me for once with a smile. That wasn't for my sake. She stayed here just to search for the still-living Roa. That is the only reason why she gave me her phone number. <laughs> I guess the truth is I, I played myself. Then that too. <laughs> and those times too. <laughs> and when she saved me that one night too. <laughs> and those sad eyes too. <laughs> That's right, Shiki. This is nothing at all. These memories, they are nothing at all. I just thought I loved her. And that she loved me back. What a joke. They were all just an illusion made from a play. All of it. All of it was a fairy tale made up of lies. I understand. But Senpai, how did you know Roa was still alive? How how do you know Roa reincarnated into this Tonoshiki? Of course I knew. Because it's about myself. Senpai said something I can't understand. A about yourself? Yes. Aw, oh, shit. The one who sought out the Tono family and chose it for the next host was me. Well, unless Roa's consciousness awakens, I couldn't tell that it appeared. So it wasn't that useful of a memory, though. Senpai, what are you saying? What am I saying? It's an old story. It's a story from eight years ago, but there was a girl like you who didn't know anything. She was 16 years old when that impulse began to stain her. But before that, there was nothing. She didn't even have any special powers like you did, Tonokun. She really did live a normal life without knowing anything. Helping out her father, going to school. Terrible at waking up early, but always helping with the store in the evening. She really did think she would carry on her father's work. <laughs> Just now. Scenery I've never seen before flashes in my head, yet I feel like I haven't in fact seen it somewhere. Her story feels like it's very similar to that dream I saw. Yeah, that was, uh, the end of chapter 9, I think. But her dream wasn't fulfilled. With her own hand, she destroyed the happiness that was there naturally. Because she was Roa's reincarnated host. Her body had great ability, and Roa was pleased. She tried so hard to resist it just like you, but it was useless. In the end, she drank the blood of her father and mother, and slowly killed the townspeople. That child. Maybe she went crazy then. You understand, right, Tonokun? You can't stop it. Stop, or you shouldn't, doesn't even enter your thoughts. Isn't it strange? Even though you still have your conscious aware. Senpai, don't tell me that story is... But that nightmare came to an end soon. That woman in white came and pierced her heart. Yeah, I know. 
So the girl died and Roa reincarnated as Tonoshiki, in all caps. But that's... But that girl, she couldn't stay dead. Quietly, uh, almost laughingly, she says this. Her dead body was taken to the church and preserved as a sample of a vampire returning to human form. But though I don't know what kind of fate it was, her body was special. It was a special body. It had an abnormal reviving ability. One day, three years later, even though she shouldn't have, she came back from the dead. It's strange, isn't it? Even though it was just a discarded shell of Roa's soul, it still came back to life. After that, things were... difficult. The church viewed the child's existence as heresy and killed the child, but no matter how many times they killed her, she wouldn't die. I'm sorry, can I complain a little bit? That girl, she underwent an entire month of life only being killed. Every single day, without even a single moment of rest, she came back to life only to be killed once more. Every single day. All day. Jesus. <laughs> what? A body that can't die. Flesh that will return to its original state no matter what happens. Roa, the vampire reincarnated as Tonoshiki, said that about this person. It seems so painful. Senpai healed no matter what wound she received, but every wound she got caused her face to consort in pain. Every day of that? Every day, all day, without a single pause, living to be killed and coming back again? And then, the people of the church finally realized this was too strange. All the problems that no one could deal with or solve are handed to the place called the Burial Agency. There she was taught what happened to her. In short, she was a contradiction. She was a human born of Roa. Even though her personality of her first fifteen years was hers, the name of her soul was Roa. While she was herself, she was also Roa. So it is a contradiction that the girl called Roa is dead when Roa is alive. The progeny of the existence Roa. This daughter of Roa cannot die before him. Whenever this world has ever even a slight error, this world corrects it to preserve itself. So, that child, as long as Roa's soul exists, will exist for all eternity. No one else but the world itself fixes the error automatically. The church said the child was outside the cycle. As long as Roa lives, it will forever be stopped. She cannot die of old age since she cannot age, and even if she was burnt to ash, time would reverse itself to return to its original state. Such a monster... It usually would have been sealed away forever, but she happened to inherit the magical knowledge of Roa. The clergy of the burial agency said she would be useful and brought her to the church. Five years since then, she chose to discard her name and live as one who hunted vampires. More than Roa's master Arquid, I can tell where Roa's soul exists. The reason I don't even have to tell you, right? Right. It doesn't have need to be said, but... I don't want to admit such a thing. I said it before, Tonokun. Ciel's goal is one thing and one thing only. I want to die as a human. I didn't understand what those words meant then, but now... Now I can understand at least a little bit of it. I can't. It's almost regretful, but I can't. I can't understand the feeling of wanting to die. As long as I'm alive, I'll think about wanting to die, but I would never truly mean it. But that's all Senpai wishes for. A way of thinking which is, was transformed into that. A life that makes you wish only for that. I don't know yet. With my own hands, I don't know the pain of killing the ones close to me with my own hands even while still conscious. And I don't ever want to know it. But this person has lived through it. So is that why she just wants to die? That's... that's wrong. It's not. I simply want to die as a human. Her voice sounds cold. I... I can only nod. Both her wish and her pain, I understand. I don't want it. I don't like my treatment or Ciel's wish. I don't want to think this is reality. But time waits for no one. With a metallic rattle, the agent called Ciel steps forward to kill me. As if saying there's no need to talk anymore, Ciel's hands lift up the weapon. As Ciel raises it, we get a description of her weapon. The Seventh Holy Scripture. A weapon that would destroy Shiki, body and soul, completely. The bayonet is now pointed at him. 
There's no more time. We get two options. We can attempt to escape away, or we can try to escape by moving forward. Since we know she has the speed to catch us at full sprint, running away will get us nowhere. All we can do is approach, so I select to escape forward. He manages to dodge her first attack, but in an instant, she quickly changes her position and swings again. The next thing Shiki knows, he's several meters away from her, and his left arm is broken and bent badly. He had been sent flying, but instinctively blocked the attack with his arm to take the impact away from his head. Ciel asks if he'll pull out his knife, staring at him coldly as the pain from his arm starts to strain his brain. She continues to look at me with those cold eyes. You... You broke my arm and you still act that way? Do you know how much this hurts? Making such a fool of me. Making such a fool of me. Making such a fool of me. If that's how you're going, you're going to be, senpai. I grip my, the knife in my pocket. I'm not just going to stand here helplessly, the hard feeling of metal, and let you kill me. With a quick snap, I take out the blade of my knife. Are you stupid? Instantly, her body explodes. No, that's not right. She crouches down low to the ground, almost like a lizard, and runs up towards me in a flash. She closes the distance of six meters in a flash. She's not in my vision at all. Her whole body is below my knee height and explodes upward from there. A thud. From right beneath me, her bayonet accurately shoots directly for my throat. Gah! I gasp. Pain. Is there pain? Yes, I can still feel the pain. Ah, ah. Conscious. Am I conscious? All right, I still have that. Ah, my body. My body is not okay. A dripping sound. It's coming from my left shoulder. Looking at it, it's already a waterfall of blood, which pours straight down. Just now, the bayonet didn't hit my throat, but my left shoulder. Ah, it hurts. It hurts so much, the word pain doesn't come close to describing it. Ah, but I'm alive. Still, I'm alive. My body, my body is away from her again. I smell a whiff of gunpowder from my shoulder. Ah, just now, the instant that bayonet pierced me, she must have pulled the trigger. I was blown away by that, and there's distance between us again. It happened twice. That must mean it's not a coincidence. With that much blood pouring out, not dying from the shock must already be a sign that your body has begun to change. Ka-ching! A metal, metallic sound. The sword on the end of that weapon changes into a new one. The sword that shot me just now falls and turns into pages of a book and scatters. That's ridiculous. But that ridiculous thing is really frightening. That just touching me carries a fatal poison. Death. I'll die. Without a doubt, I'll be killed. Will I die? Is that what I'm scared of? I don't know. I, My shoulder is burning. Hot. It's so hot. As so if my entire body will burst into flames, she readies her weapon once more with another metallic clang. Twice. Withstanding that twice can be nothing but a miracle. The next time will certainly... I imagine that bayonet piercing me right in, my, in the face. That's more repulsive than frightening. Death is. No matter how it happens, something useless, dirty, and disgusting. I like myself, so I don't want that to happen. Is that why I'm scared? I don't know. Come to think of it. I, I was always able to see death, but I never thought about death at all. No, that doesn't really matter right now. <sighs> I have to escape. I don't want to die, so I have to get away. You won't take off your glasses? A simple, plastic voice. Those words. I gasp at their meaning. Because taking them off means I would see Senpai's lines. If that happens, I might kill her. But what are you saying, Senpai? Would she have the lines, though? A chill runs through me. The air suddenly becomes saturated with murderous intent. I can't spend any more time with you. Please just die already. Her figure plunges low again. She's coming. Even though I know she's going to run towards me again, it's hard for her me to even see her. I can only think of escaping. If I don't want to be killed, escape is my only option. Fortunately, our distance is almost 10 meters. I feel like I'm about to make a choice again. I'm gonna... No, don't load the game. I need to save the game. Uh, here. If I run as fast as I can, I can make it to the school building. Maybe I might be able to do something if I can get into a less open space. That sounds like a terrible idea. My back. Something pierced my back. Ah, My body falls forward. Just a little more. 
and it was just a little more before I could enter the built school building. <laughs> I left myself up with one arm. What sticks through me is one of those swords that looks like a nail, else that senpai was using before. Why, you... I must be numb to the pain, but I pull out the sword skewering my back from behind. Since it penetrated through me, I got mad and pulled it out from my chest. Oh, that's not healthy. Alright, now I can escape inside. What do you plan on doing by escaping, Tonokun? Before that, I hear Senpai's voice from behind me. You still don't understand. How fast do you think you just ran here? Why are you still alive after receiving that fatal wound? St my mind begins to white out. Don't let her trick you. Don't let her trick you. Hasn't she been deceiving you all along? Don't listen to her anymore. If you listen, you'll die. Ignore her. Don't accept it. Even if it is the truth, this body can only reject it. Stop it. Jeez, there's nowhere for you to run. You can only fight or be killed. But if you can't fight, you can only die. As her footsteps get closer, Shiki manages to throw his mangled body into the school. He runs through the hall, but eventually he loses the energy or feeling in his body to go on, and he falls near the hallway's end. He can't get back up, only able to prop his back against the wall. He looks at the moon through the window and his mind starts to wander. Things start to look, quote, vague, unquote, or, quote, covered in a mist, unquote. He settles on the word indefinite, and he starts to connect it with Tonoshiki, the self he thought he knew. Despite his pain, he tries to make sense of himself. He's told he's adopted, but he can't remember his life before being Tonoshiki. Anything before is just... gone. I... really... I only have the memories of Tonoshiki. In the night sky is the solitary moon. It's incredibly... strange. Why didn't I realize it until now? Tonight is so... In the end, just what was I? It's stupid not knowing anything about myself and just disappearing like this. Everything is so vague, it's stupid. A world where I can see death. A vision where I can perceive death. That day, eight years ago, I was able to meet Sensei and was able to live normally. I can still declare that it was, a, it was proper to meet her. But Sensei, I, I guess I was someone who shouldn't be alive. I should end my life while some part of me can still think like that. But I can't do it. I can't kill myself. Even if it is pointless, even if it was a mistake, I want to keep on living. If I die, everything will become a lie. I want to keep on living. No matter how wrong it is, no matter how many things I have to lose, I want to keep on living. Only her. If only I had Ciel Senpai with me, I wouldn't care what else I had to lose. For that sole reason, I have kept on living like this. But that's all over now. These past five years? Was it a long time? Was it a short time? I don't know. Liar. I don't want to hear those words. I have to thank you, Tonokun. My work here is done now. All that's left is for me to take responsibility for all my actions. Lie. <sighs> yeah, but maybe there was some truth in there too. Because even though she deceived me, not even once. Thank you for so much for everything until now. It's been a long time since I've been this happy. So let's finish this with a handshake. You big liar. Not even once did she lie to me. Even though I'm not going to be here, please stay friends with Inui-kun. I want to be a student like you and Inui-kun. But that person herself was a lie. I can't even think that smile could really be a lie. But this is what reality is. Ciel is a lie, and she was staying near me only so she could kill me. I was fooled. She did not love me at all. And when she helped me when I was completely lost too. And the time we spent during breaks for no reason too. All of it was just to confirm if I was Roa or not. I gripped my teeth. I gripped my teeth hard. Damn it. I scratched the wall in frustration. Yes, I was tricked. Ciel got close to me, calculating everything. Even still, feeling my pain in my heart, I scratched the wall. Yeah, I was tricked. But still, I can't hate Senpai. There's no way I can hate her. Even if it was all a lie for her, I really enjoyed it. No matter what, that's still true. It was only less than two weeks ago since I met, met Senpai, but I was really happy. Damn it. That's why I can't hate her. But that's an illusion only for me. That's why I regret only that. My vision wavers. Outside the window lies the white night. It's quiet here, almost like the bottom of a deep sea. Wavering quietly. 
Everything is fake, an illusion that disappears when you approach it. Like a mirage you can never grasp. Why did the music cut off? Oh. Oh no. I can hear her footsteps. She's coming. Kill her? Inside my head, I hear those words. If you don't want to die, slice her apart. If you think you're not mistaken, slice her apart. Just slice her apart already. Slice her apart. Slice her apart. Slice her apart. Slice her apart. Oh god. Oh my god. It looks like I'm really done. My head starts to rage again. But still, I don't want to die. If I don't want to die, there's only one thing to do. The footsteps get louder. Her shadow grows larger. Aren't you going to take off your glasses? Even knowing what it meant, she said that. In that case... No, I don't think I will. I'm gonna fucking die, but I'm gonna keep those on. And what do I do? No way. I bring my slightly trembling fingers up to my glasses and throw. Oh, I guess I, I don't have a choice in the matter. Clang. The dull sound echoes through the hallway. There's no way I can do that. I shout angrily at the other person inside my head. It's the first time I ever wanted to kill myself. Clang. Clang. The hard object rolls along the floor. I don't see any lines. What I threw away was my knife. I won't take off my glasses. I'll never do that. It's just that, since I didn't have confidence in myself, I threw my away my knife. If I kept holding it, I know I would have done something worse than me dying. And then, she arrives. Neither her emotionless eyes nor that foreboding weapon change. She stops in front of me as I sit on the ground. How come? She doesn't finish me off. We just both stare at each other aimlessly. I have one question. The tip of her bayonet aims at my chest. Why didn't you take off your glasses? Why? Didn't you even try to fight me once? It's simple. It's just that the thought never crossed my mind. I can't do such a horrible thing to you, senpai. Horrible? Are you stupid? I'm going to kill you. I'm not your senpai. I told you that everything was a lie and you still don't understand. Her voice sounds so irritated. She's really angry. I realize that even though her face is calm, her arms and legs are literally shaking with anger. I know. Senpai, you were deceiving me up until now. This person called Ciel Senpai never existed from the beginning. I understand that. If you understand that, then why? It's okay. Even if Senpai is a lie, it doesn't matter. I've really had a lot of fun. The time we spent together may not mean much to you, but it was very dear to me. That's why it's okay. Even if it's all a lie to Senpai, the fact that I was saved by that is still true. That's why it's okay. These past two weeks really were fun, but if I hate you here, I'll lose even that. Even if it's a lie to you, that's only half of it. As for my half, I want to make it real until the very end. Although exchanging my life for that might be a comical wish. For that? For that you are going to throw your life away? Such a wish. Your wish is something that's small. I see. Maybe it is kind of small. But right now, that is the second dearest thing to me. I can only think of one wish other than that. I have seen many people, but... She takes a step forward. This is the first time I've seen someone as stupid as you. Senpai places the tip of her bayonet right up against my heart. How come? She doesn't pull the trigger. The eyes looking at me are completely empty. Those emotionless eyes that Senpai shows me. That doesn't mean she's a cold-hearted person, but... Simply, she can't deceive herself. So in the end, I suppose all she can do was just kill her emotions. Yeah, I finally realized it. That whenever she showed those eyes, she wasn't fooling me. She was fooling herself. You're not going to kill me, Senpai? I forgot. In the end, I still must hear your confession. I am a member of the church, after all. Oh, I don't have anything to confess, but can I ask something? Yes. Please, make it short. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it quick. It's just... I was wondering why you look like you're going to cry. Like a jolt, I think Ciel's body trembled. <laughs> I'm not... crying. Certainly, her face is stone cold as she denies this. Hearing that, I even tilt my head to the side. But all the same, I... But you look, still look like you're about to cry. 
I don't know why, though. That's just your imagination. I don't feel anything. The only emotion I have is dear the desire to die as a human. There's nothing else. She says this with her emotionless eyes. It's terribly sad. Knowing she's lying right now is just too ironic. How terrible. Even to the end, you're going to lie to me, senpai. There's no response. As if she was frozen, she doesn't move. What about you? You're lying? I don't think your wish is to be killed here by me, right? Of course. Because if you die, there's nothing. I've already experienced it once, so I understand that. To tell the truth, I want to live, but I don't want to just live. Yeah, I, I don't want that. Even if I manage to keep living, there's nothing for me after that. The person called Tonoshiki would die and would do st things just like this person experienced. But more than that, if I live here, that means Senpai will be gone. I would not be able to hear to bear living like that. Senpai, everything was fun up until now. The times I spent with you and Arihiko weren't bad. Even during breaks when you came, it was fun. Almost like a dream. That's probably what my wish is. It can't be ever be granted, but... I really wanted it, that kind of life to continue. You still don't understand. I already said it was all fake. Yeah, but still. It was really fun. The instant I say that, my heart calms down. It's okay if it's just an unreachable illusion. I don't care if it was a mirage that never existed in the first place. No, maybe because it was an illusion. Even now, the times I spent with Senpai feel so dear to me. No matter what, I can't escape. Then... If I can just keep watching that dream, then it would be such a great... How? Foolish, she says. And she slightly moves her bayonet. It sticks into my chest. Just a little bit. It only goes into me slightly, like a fingernail's depth. Her eyes have stopped. All that's left is for her to take another step and it'll all be over. But that final step doesn't start. Bracing the bayonet, she stares at me with her emotionless eyes. She grits her teeth painfully. I see. It must be too difficult for her to do it while I'm looking at her. More than anything, I also don't want to see this person's face on the verge of tears. So I won't trouble her anymore. I decide to close my eyes and accept my end. Thump. My heart quivers. Even though I'm prepared, the nausea and chills don't go away. Thump. 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 My throat is burning. My fingertips shake uncontrollably. I know. I know this is the best, but still, I'm, I'm just scared. I frantically try to hold my breath that tries to spill out. She simply has to move 10 centimeters forward and I'll turn into a mere lump of flesh. Even though I'm supposed to be ready for this, my fearful heart is scared of disappearing without a trace. All I can do is frantically close my mouth and try to accept my fate. It would probably hurt if I got get stabbed in the chest. I'm scared of not being able to think like I am right now. Ugh. Sweat beads on my forehead. But still, I don't want to speak. If I quietly let everything end, Senpai probably won't feel have to feel guilty. I hear a gasp. Why? A forced voice. Why? How? The sword sticking into my chest quivers. How can you not hate me? No, what's quivering is Senpai's voice. I, I'm trying to kill you. I've deceived you up until now. I've, I've betrayed you and mercifully, hu mercilessly hunted you down. Why does your face look so, so peaceful? Tap. With her sword still in place, she takes another step towards me. Answer me. I'm going to kill you. Without any regards to your own will. Just a one-sided murder. And you won't be compensated unless you hate me, right? Senpai questions me with burning intensity. Quit it. I'm working so hard to resist this fear, but if I answer now, my feelings might flow out. Or are you really that just that stupid? I'm exterminating you as a dirty vampire, so why? Didn't I tell her it was nothing earlier? Because it isn't your fault, Senpai. <gasps> Slice. The tip of the blade cuts into me further. It must have broken into my skin because fr fresh blood seeps over my chest. <laughs> Sharp pain. The wound isn't even deep, but just the slightest penetration by the seventh holy scripture causes my mind to shatter. Ah, ah. My body shakes uncontrollably. The blood in my body reverses 
flow, and I, I almost cough up blood in my in pain. It hurts, right? I can actually terminate you without making you feel pain, but I'm hurting you like this on purpose. Unless you enjoy this, we won't be able to call it even for all the time I had to spend with you until now. She seems to be speaking with difficulty. The bayonet plunges deeper. The pain causes sweat to pour out of me. I feel like my insides are going to flow out through my mouth. See? Don't you hate me, Tonokun? So please hate me. Tell me I betrayed you. Tell me it would have been better if you'd never trusted me. If you don't, I won't be able to kill you. Her voice shakes as she says this. But that's just strange. It's better if I don't hate her, but she still wants me to hate her. It's like she's telling me that being the bad guy like that is her punishment. Ah! Ah! But that is an impossible order. There's no way I can hate her. I just can't hate that person who looks like a child on the verge of tears. You can't be serious. I can't hate you, senpai. Stop, stop it! Please! Why are you saying it at till the very end? I'm the one who's to blame. You're just the victim. Isn't senpai a victim too? And no matter what, I'll be taken over by Roa soon. Before that, before I make mistakes like CL senpai did, I have to kill Roa. There isn't any other way to vanquish Roa than my death, so it just can't be helped. It's okay. It's not your fault. More than that, I'm sorry. Sorry to make you do this, senpai. Stop. <laughs> Stop it, she says, in a quiet voice, and her bayonet pulls from my chest slightly. No, I... I, I can't let Bro escape. The tip of the seventh holy scripture wavers. But that should end soon. I can't... Allow that, Tonokun. A grinding sound. Senpai grits her teeth and stops the seventh holy scripture. The tip of its point, uh, the tip of it points at my heart. I hear her suck in a breath. Even with her, my eyes closed, I can feel her fingers gripping the trigger. Click. Right before the hard metallic sound. Thank you. Even if it was a lie, it was good having you as senpai. In the end, I say what I wanted to tell her the most. Uh, uh. I can hear a voice. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sobbing. I can hear a voice that sounds like a crying child. Uh, uh. A loud thud. The metallic pile falls to the floor. A bayonet sticks into the wall behind me like a spear. <laughs> Hick. Hick. <laughs> a pain voice. I realize who that voice is coming from and I open my eyes slowly. There isn't the senpai that was there just now. The one I see standing before me is just a girl crying painfully. Her hands are empty. The seventh holy scripture lies fallen on the floor. The bayonet should have pierced my heart and is thrust by my side. <laughs> uh, uh. Senpai just cries. I don't know what, what she's sad about, but she cries so painfully I expect her to cough up blood. Senpai. I call out to her. It's not fair, Tonokun. It's not fair. <laughs> the throat convulses as she shouts like a spoiled child. Saying, saying such things isn't fair. Why, why can't I? Her tears course down her face. I can't. Even though I can even kill myself at any time. If you say that to me, I can't. She seems ashamed to see me. Saying thank you like that. I can't let you s such a happy person die like that. She covers her face with her hands as she continues to weep. Senpai, seeing you cry makes me troubled. Because I won't know what to do. <laughs> My words might, not, might have been the wrong choice as Senpai cries even louder. Jeez, why are you doing this all of a sudden? I don't even understand why I did that. But I can't leave this person who's crying in front of me, so I pull her to me and embrace her. Aww. We collide with a thud. Senpai collapses against my chest and continues crying as she stifles her voice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With a quivering voice, she says this over and over. 
What is this? Then the real lie was the senpai up until now. Finally, I get to meet senpai. It was about an hour after I called her, but I feel like I've waited for so long. You don't have to apologize, senpai. I just wanted to do so, and I embrace her with my still functional right hand. Uh, a voice like something stretched was just snapped. Senpai finally stops crying. Thump. Thump. I can hear the heartbeat of the person across from me like my own. It's awfully quiet. I can't find the right words to say. But staying like this, just hearing her heartbeat is good enough. What I really wanted, what I really wished for was just a small thing. Like this, it was just fine having Senpai, like she is. Senpai, your body's warm. No, the one who is warm is you, Toto-kun. I'm a very cold person. I, I did such terrible things to such a nice person. No, Senpai, I'm not kind. Even now, I just want to touch you, Senpai. I just want to stay like this forever. It's okay. I'm still alive, so it's okay. If... We can keep doing this, it's okay. I died once a long time ago. After that, I realized how happy, how much happiness it was just to be alive. A world where death can be seen. A world where I can see death. Every time, things that are easily lost. But that's why... Being alive is happiness. To feel that, being able to feel Senpai's warmth like this, is an exceeding happiness by itself. Senpai, you really are dear to me. I don't want to die. I want to live as much as I can, and I want to be with you like this, senpai. Firmly, I grip her hands. So I want you to live. Please. Please don't say you wish your wish is to die. There's no answer. Thump. Thump. Just the beating of her heart through, her, through our skin. No. That can't happen. Suddenly, she speaks in a crying voice. That's the only thing that kept me going until now. I could die. If Roa disappeared, I could die. I must die. That's why I could bear everything so far. Because I killed my father and mother. Because I killed everyone. Because I came like this. And because I tricked you and tried to kill you, I... Without delay, I have to die. Why do you have to die? Certainly you've done a lot of painful things, but that wasn't your fault, senpai. You say that, but I did them all with my own hands, Tonokun. No, the only one who's at fault is Roa. There's no reason you have to die, Senpai. But there's no reason for me to live either. Saying that, Senpai gives a mirthless laugh. I know. I know I don't have the right. I did so many horrible things. But why? She asks with a quivering voice. I don't deserve to be happy. That's why I never thought of it. That's why I never even dreamed of it. But, but why? Thud. Like a crying child, Senpai beats her hand against my chest. So why now do I see this sinful dream? She buries her face in my chest as she says this. It was so fun, even though I knew it was all a lie, and I'm just playing out the life where I'm having fun. Even though it was fine the way it was, it was so fun, I didn't want it to end even if I knew it was all a lie. Almost a dream like happiness that I wanted to always last just one day longer. I see. What we wanted, what we wished for, was the same after all. But that selfishness cannot be allowed. I have to kill Roa quickly and receive my punishment. I have no right to live a normal life like you, Tonokun. Such a thing I understand without you saying it. If I'm wishing for such a dream and I can't even kill you, I can't even do any I can't do anything but disappear. There's no longer a reason for me to stay here. Senpai speaks with an anguished face. Farewell. I was really happy to hear you thank me. Senpai pulls back from me. The heartbeat I felt up until now cuts off. This person has told me farewell so many times. Even that time. With a smile she said as if it was very important to her. Farewell. I really did want to be a student like you in Inui-kun. Really, why didn't I ever realize it? She would always say those simple things as if it were, if they were distant dream for her. No, it's not a dream. <laughs> I pull Senpai's body back towards me. Less out of love and more out of sorrow, I draw her close. 
Toto-kun, that's enough. No, I won't be fooled by your lies anymore, senpai. I hold her close to me as she tries to escape. If you want to continue, then go ahead and do so. What you're talking about is definitely not a dream. That... that's impossible. Why? After all, it really happened in reality. It's a way of life that if you wish for it, will come back. Please, don't call such simple things like that a dream. It's impossible. I've hurt you so much, Tono-kun, it's too late to go back. Oh, that's... okay. I don't mind, so you shouldn't either. See, I think I got to experience something as rare as truly being chased by the one I like. I try to sound as jokingly cheerful as I can. Senpai is silent. And tonight, you looked really cool. Those clergy robes are wood too, but your outfit tonight really suits you too. I was lucky to see it. Senpai is silent. Senpai, you look different without your glasses. You were handsome and you looked older. As expected, Senpai is silent. No matter what I say, Senpai does not answer. I try as hard as I can to soften the mood, but fail miserably. I don't know what else I can say. Senpai, say something. Or don't you want to talk to me now? Senpai doesn't answer. She just pats her forehead against my chest. Slowly, like a murmur. Idiot! Is what she ends up saying. Tonokun, you're an idiot. I... I'm not the person you think I am, so how can you be so nice? Because I don't want you to cry. I want you to laugh. I want you to cheer up. But I don't have the right. I don't have the right to receive your kindness. A right to receive kindness. I didn't have such a thing either. But still, the one who laughed it off and told me that I didn't need such a thing was her. I don't know. I don't know your circumstances. And honestly, I don't care. I'm not being kind to you for your sake, so don't worry about it. That time, after I killed Arkwood and when I could only think of killing myself, just like what you said to me that time. Uh, well, I, th I think I'm doing this because I just want to be kind to you. Your circumstances have nothing to do with this. It may be a bother to you, but just think of yourself as having been caught by a mean-spirited underclassman and give up. Harder, I hold her even more strongly to me and press our bodies closer together. Uh, Tonokun. I don't know about your sins. I like you. No, I love you, Senpai. That's why I w I'm being kind to you. Everything else doesn't matter. I just want to be happy with you. I want to be with you forever, so I don't want you to die. But uh, I... I... But still. Still, if you say you don't want to be happy, that's fine too. I'll just do what I want, and no matter how much you might hate it, I'll be by your side and make you happy. So, please, don't say farewell anymore. Saying that, I bring my hands to her face. Shiki-kun. After she says that this faintly, completely naturally, our two lips come together. As their kiss concludes, Ciel moves off of him. Shiki thinks it's silly that he said all of that, knowing his fate is sealed. But, as those were his true feelings, he let them out. Ciel, however, asks him if those words, that his promise, is truly something that he can give her. Of course. I'm like this, but as long as there's a piece of me remaining, I'll always love you, senpai. Please, don't say such irresponsible things. If you're going to make me happy, then you have to stay as Tonokun. That's true, but it won't happen. I can't even trust if I'll be myself by the time tomorrow comes. Sorry. I I'm hopeless. Senpai, when I get to that to a point where I can't turn back, at that time, I will not let you die, she declares. She strongly interrupts my words. I will not let you die. I won't let Roa have you. Senpai, but I will protect you. I will save you. No matter what. So please do not say that. Senpai quickly stands up and with a serious face tends to my wounds. It seems they, may, they have already healed. It's nighttime, so your body is more like that of a vampire right now. Um, thanks to that, you were not killed. <laughs> Maybe we should give Roa some thanks. Trying to lighten the mood or something, Senpai gives a joke that isn't exactly easy to reply to. Tonokun, can you stand by yourself? I can stand, but... Senpai, is there really a way to save me? I can't say for sure, but if I go back to the Vatican, there might be a way. Um, 
Unlike before, they had a sample, me, to research on. So they should have researched into how to seal Roa's soul while leaving the reincarnated human's consciousness. What's that? If there was such an easy way, then why... Tonokun, certainly the church may be able to help you, but what awaits you may be hell. To the people of the church, you and I are both heretics. You will not. You will get the treatment in return for helping their research. Although, if you stay quiet about your eyes, you may not be treated like a lab specimen like I was, but... In other words, it'll really hurt. Yes. And if they still could not heal you, you would be treated as a vampire. I don't want you to experience those terrible things worse than death. That's why I... It's okay, senpai. Right now, we're at a dead end. If there's even the slightest chance, then we have to go wherever. And no matter how it turns out, I won't complain, senpai. No, I won't let anyone hurt you. Please trust me on that. Yeah, I trust you, senpai. I say that, but... Being a real small-town person, I'm actually kind of worried about things like my passport and airfare. Those are probably the least of your worries, I'm going to be honest. But what are we going to do? Are you going to the Vatican right now? No, I will treat you for tonight. Roa is a vampire, so when it becomes morning, he will calm down. It would be simple if it was just a matter of taking you to the Vatican, but your problem is something that should be kept a low profile. Just like with me, you are something that should not exist, so you have to go to the hidden part of the church. But to take, you there, to take you there, I have to get some permission. Even if we were to minimally purify you, there aren't any places in this city where we could do that. There is only one place where we can purify you in our way in this country, so I have to take you there first. Hmm. So are you saying that we're going to the church tomorrow morning? No, it's not that simple. For an unbeliever like you to enter the Vatican, there is a long, frustrating approval process. So tomorrow I will go to the church in this country so that you can get a temporary permit. And that may take a number of days, so please wait in my room until then. I will place a blockade against vampires in my room, so you should be able to last against Roa for a week or two there. Your room? You mean, I'm staying in your room? Um, Tonokun, your life is in danger, so please put up with it. You can at least let your sister know, but please don't tell her the details. Well, it's not like I can tell her in the first place. Then, shall we go? We have to separate that Roa inside of you to start off. She grabs my arm and starts to walk. There really is no trace of her weakness before, but it is a forced cheerfulness. Senpai really doesn't want me to be worried, so she's forcing herself. Thanks, Senpai. I speak in a low voice so she won't hear me. At her apartment, Shiki asks what they'll do now. She says they'll, quote, temporarily silence, unquote, Roa in Shiki. Roa's consciousness is actually already slowed by being in her room, as it's, quote, holy ground, unquote. However, just stopping his mind isn't enough, as there is also the issue of Shiki's body. Ciel starts blushing and attempts to word it in a way Shiki might understand it. She asks if his body feels strange, but changes it to the idea of an intense heat or the need for a release. Shiki thinks that his fixation on destruction, like with the chair in the hallway or what he did to Kohaku earlier, is what she means. He says he's fine since he hasn't heard Roa since entering her room, but Ciel responds that Shiki is still focused on his mind, and not his body. Shiki doesn't understand, and Ciel tries once more to reword it in a way that he can understand. After some silence, she just tells Shiki to take a shower. Though he's initially confused at this sudden demand, she isn't taking no for an answer and brings him to the bathroom. He then takes a shower while Ciel waits outside. Shiki does realize how messy he is. Aside from the battle that they just had, he'd been locked up in his room since the day before. He also notes something else, that a part of his body has blood rushing to it, and it's not calming down. He starts to realize that this might also have been because of Roa, and he's also a bit concerned with how long it's possibly been like that. Frustrated at the situation, he decides to try to solve the issue in the shower. When he exits the shower, Ciel asks if he was able to let it out, with Shiki's flustered response answering her question. She then says that he may not be able to release unless Roa wills it, and Shiki reveals that he in fact could not do it while in the shower. It turns out that this bodily issue is what Ciel tried explaining earlier. See, didn't I tell you to tell me if your body was strained somewhere? Then you were asking about this before? Yes. Tonokun, you may not have realized it yourself, but you are pretty excited. I was able to calm your mind, but we have to calm down that body too. Aurora will be able to take over. Damn, I have to call my dick so this guy doesn't take over my dick? Hate to see it. I see. Hey, 
tell me those kinds of things clearly. I feel so stupid not even realizing it until I was naked. If I could say it clearly, it wouldn't be difficult. Oh, that's right. Uh, of course she can't say it clearly, because CL Senpai is a girl. Doi, I love that she immediately just glared at him. He was like, you stupid. Sorry, but what should I do now? I tried to do something about it, but it won't, just won't calm down. It's like my mind and body are two completely separate things. My, bi my body feels like it's not mine, and I can't even get in the mood for it. Jeez, to say it frankly, it's like I have no sensitivities whatsoever. It would be easy if I could say it out loud like that, but I can't say that sort of thing to Senpai. I know. Ciel says she understands the issue, with Shiki remembering that she too was affected by Roa. She does have a solution to calm his body, and that involves another person helping. She says she'll be doing it, a technique to, quote, calm the soul, so it isn't sexual, unquote. Shiki is dumbstruck and attempts to decline by saying they shouldn't, but she tells him to wait in her room while she takes a shower. As he resigns himself to this absurd situation, Ciel does ask one more question from the shower. Does he want her to wear glasses or not? This is an actual in-game choice, by the way, and it will affect the pictures in the next scene. So, um, put in the comments, glasses or no glasses. Glasses, huh? Senpai really is concerned about the weirdest things. But her blushing face by the doorway is just too cute. Oh my god, I get to choose? Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Like, I like her with glasses, but like... I don't want to have her put on the glasses just because it would be like a thing that it... Like, I would rather her just kind of go with like what she prefer. So I'm assuming she want to keep her natural look. Those glasses are just for show. So let's just... I'm just going to do that. <laughs> I don't know how much of this is going to be shown. I don't even know how much this matters. We're just going to hit number one and go with it. After an exchange where he says not to wear them if they'd be an issue, Shiki heads to her bedroom. As he attempts to calm down and his mind tries to rationalize what her technique is, she comes out with only a shirt. And it's here we stop because we got another sex scene. Put it on the board. There it is. Woo! The inability to deny the extremely sexual nature of the situation has Shiki extremely flustered. He attempts to back out of it again, but she tells him not to worry, as she's only thinking of what she's doing as, quote, lancing a boil, unquote. Eventually, she starts working on his issue, and it eventually escalates, and they fuck, and it goes on for so long, and I just want to get back to the story, ah! But it eventually ends with both of them on the bed, staring at the ceiling. Eventually, the thing that comes is the morning. I'm going. I'll be back as soon as I can, so please don't leave the room, okay? It seems like she's brought enough food to last two weeks. I'll leave aside the fact that most of it seems to be curry. Please don't run off with some floozy while I'm gone. I get really jealous. She says a scary thing with a deep smile and exits the room. It's before 5 o'clock in the morning. This is how the last Monday in October began. And with that, this enormous day draws to a close, one that caused immense pain but also revealed the true nature of Shiki's sudden violent and gross outbursts. It also ended with us seeing Ciel at full strength, but also seeing her at her most vulnerable. I leave you now, but next time, we will start Chapter 12, Endless Stone. <laughs>